Welcome to New Life Kids Wednesday Night Live. I'm so glad you guys are joining us again tonight. And this is a night of celebration, really our last Wednesday night of the year for Gospel Project. And what a great year it has been. Uh, I just am always so humbled and thankful to serve with such great volunteers who faithfully come every week, except for the last couple weeks because they haven't been allowed to come because of the quarantine, but they have loved our kids with the love of Christ with so much beauty and energy this year. I am just humbled to even know them. And then super excited that God has seen us through another faithful year of ministry and teaching his word. And oh, let's celebrate tonight, guys. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say hip, hip, hooray. On three, ready? One, two, three, hip, hip, hooray. Yeah, okay, good job. We're celebrating tonight. So I also wanted to just tell you guys that uh, our um, Wednesday night ministry for Gospel Project will hopefully start up as usual again in the fall. So be watching for registration to open in August for that. And hopefully we'll be back in the building. Now, don't forget tonight that if you're doing the activity that I'm going to have us doing and if you're dancing around to the music, Take some pictures and send it off with hashtag this is New Life Aberdeen because you guys get to see us, but we want to see you and see what you're up to too. You can put that either on our Facebook page or you can um, uh, put it, where else can you put it? Um, you can email the pictures too to children at newlifeaberdeen.org. So, okay, now a couple other things here. I don't want you guys, let's go back for just a second. This is our last night for Wednesday night ministry, um, and we'll take the summer off, but then on Sunday mornings, all of our kids' church stuff, until we're back in the building, will be on New Life Kids' Facebook page. So search for New Life Kids, and then click the Join button, because you don't want to miss out on our Sunday morning lessons. So... Okay, and then I also just want to say that one cool thing that has been happening because we've been live streaming our Wednesday night ministry for the last few weeks is my mom and dad in North Dakota have been able to watch, which is super cool, and it's almost Mother's Day, so I'm just going to shout out to them. Hey, mom and dad, love you guys, and who knows who else has been watching, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the things we've been learning here. The first week we learned, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then the next week it was Easter, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And then the next week we talked about how we can memorize a little gospel presentation so we can be confident in sharing God's word with anyone. And we did the little cliff presentation here where God's on this side and we're over here. And God created us and he loves us, um, but we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God sent his son, Jesus, um, to pay the price for our sins and bring us back to God. So make sure that you are still practicing that and still working on it. And I would still love to see more drawings if you guys are drawing those. Last week, we talked about how um, it's our job as Christians to serve as Jesus did. And we talked about some different ways we could do that. And then we wrote the ways on little hearts. And you guys did one each day for the week. So hopefully that went great. And don't give up now. Keep doing that. Okay, keep serving. We'll uh, have another one for this week. But first, you guys might not know this, but on Sunday mornings, we rotate between raising kids' church offering money to give to different missionaries. Well, we haven't had kids' church for like two months now or something like that. And so we don't have any money to give to the missionary that we're supposed to be supporting for the last few month, months, which is Child Evangelism Fellowship, CEF. So Child Evangelism Fellowship, I actually love the gospel presentations they use and the missionary stories they tell and the songs that they sing. Super easy for kids to understand. And I have seen so many kids put their trust in Christ because of the ministry of CEF. So here's what we're going to do tonight. Ready? First time ever, Kids Church Virtual Offering. <laughs> so we usually send them $200 
and right now we have zero to send them. So here's my hope is that you can go to newlifeaberdeen.org, which is our website, and you can actually um, send an offering for them and just mark in the memo, CEF or Child Evangelism Fellowship, or on Sunday morning, you can put some money in an envelope and drop it in any of the drop boxes in the parking lot for Church on the Roof. And here's a cool thing, okay? Um, I don't even know if when I was a kid I knew what a matching fund was, but here's what it is. If you guys give $100 either on the website or in the drop boxes, New Life Kids Ministry is going to match the other $100 and we'll have the $200 to send to CEF. So... First virtual kids' church offering ever. Let's do it, guys. Pray about it and give whatever the Lord puts on your heart. It's more blessed to give than to receive, right? Okay. Now, I know this is what most of you are actually watching me for. <laughs> Here's the code. Are you ready? Code alert. Here it is. I'm a new life kid. Say it again. I'm a new life kid. Okay, so when you guys um, get to Dairy Queen after we're done watching the lesson tonight, you have to say, I'm a new life kid to get your free ice cream. So we usually end the year with a super awesome ice cream social, and I buy like 20 gallons of ice cream and a whole bunch of different toppings, and you guys all end with a huge sugar rush. <laughs> uh, and your parents are all really happy with me. But everybody loves it. This year, we can't do it in-house, but we can go through the Dairy Queen drive through They've graciously agreed to partner with us. So if you're a kid, to celebrate our ice cream social this year, go to the Dairy Queen drive through from 7 to 10 p.m., and you can order whatever kind of small blizzard you want, and it's free, or any kind of cone that you want, and it's free. And guess what? Anyone who volunteered with Gospel Project can also go, just identify yourself as a volunteer, and you also will get a free blizzard or a free cone. So after we're done this, don't leave yet. you got to finish listening to us and singing with us first, but then we'll meet you at Dairy Queen after that. So, all right, where am I at here? I think I'm ready to say Psalm 23 with you guys. All right, last time for the year. Let's nail it. All right. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. All right, guys, everybody stand up in your living room and get ready to do some dancing. All right, everyone up. We have saved the best for last, and so we're going to sing to you two songs. The first song is going to be the fa my favorite song when I was your age, and so it's called Pharaoh, Pharaoh, and it's a story of Moses. And so you need to get your hands ready. You need to get your voices deeper than they've ever been before because we are going to rock it out. And so when we go, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, baby, let my people go, you're going to go, oh. So you're going to go deep and then deep. high. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, well, oh, baby, let my people go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Said a Pharaoh, Pharaoh, well, oh, baby, let my people go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The burning bush told me the other day that I should come over here and stay. I gotta get my people out of Pharaoh's hand and lead them into the promised land. I said, oh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, well, oh, baby, let my people go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, oh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, 
Well, oh, baby, let my people go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, all of God's army came to the Red Sea with Pharaoh's army coming after me. I raised my rod and I stuck it in the sand. And all of God's people walked across dry land. I said, oh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, well, oh, baby, let my people go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, oh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, well, oh, baby, let my people go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, all of Pharaoh's army was a coming to. So what did you think that I did do? I raised my rod and stuck it in my throat. And all of Pharaoh's army did the dead man's float. I said, oh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, well, oh, baby, let my people go. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, oh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, well, oh, baby, let my people go. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. to finish the year with a song or at least the, the school church spring semester with a song called Good Good Father and it's because we're singing this song to close it out because our God despite the circumstance that we're in is good, he's faithful and uh, whether or not we're in a building worshiping him or in our homes uh, he is just so good to us that he sent us his son to die in our place and we're going to sing about that so I know a lot of you guys know this song and just sing it with me Well, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. But I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night when you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Well, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide but i know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Because you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. 
You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time again for questions from kids. Today, Grace from Los Angeles, California asks, I can't see God, so how do I know that he's with me? Grace, that is a fantastic question. And you know, we kind of saw this today in the Bible story when the Israelites thought that the ark was a symbol of God's presence and that meant that he was with them. And they trusted in the ark rather than trusting in God and that got them into trouble. You know, one of the best ways that we can know that God is with us is because he's promised us that. God has promised to always be with us no matter where we are, where we go, and what we do. And that's a great encouragement to us. And the thing about that is this, that God has made that promise and he is true. He always keeps his promises. So even though it may not feel like God is with you, even though we can't see him, we can know without a shadow of a doubt that he is with us because he has promised and we can trust God. But there's another way, and this is a, a big fancy theological word called omnipresence that God is everywhere. He is not confined to one place. He's not limited to be in one place like you and me are. God is everywhere. And so that is a great comfort to us that there's nowhere we can go to be away from Him. Man, for me, that really helps because I, I, when at times I'm feeling a little bit lonely, I know that I'm truly not alone because God is with me. And what is better than that? So how does God's promise to be with you comfort you? Hey Chuck, how's it going? I was hoping to see if you'd come out and play with me, but you... No. Man, you look rough. You okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm just down, man. You're down? Yeah, I feel oh. bad. Why do you feel bad? What's going on? I don't really know. I'm just, it's just this whole coronavirus thing. I can't go out and play with my friends. Uh, my mom and dad will never leave the house. Oh. They always get mad at me for trying to have fun. I just, I'm, I'm over it, man. I'm just... <sighs> well, hey, since you can't come outside and play with me, I have a few things I like to do that kind of lift the old spirits, you know what I mean? So hold on, just stay there for a second. Just hold on, hold on, nobody move, okay? Where am I going to go? You know, one thing, one thing my mom always says is that chocolate makes everything better. And so here's what I want to do. I want to have some, get, have play a little game with you, okay? So I got this chocolate here. I want to try to throw it into your mouth so you can catch it. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. It. Well, I made it in your shirt. I guess that's a consolation. But you got to come on now. You got to, you got to chip her up a little bit, and you got to, you got to liven up. And let's, let's do this right here. All come right, on, I'll come try. on. I'll try. Open that mouth I'll of yours. Try. Come on. Here it comes. Ready? One, two, three. See, you just caught that in your mouth. Doesn't that feel good? Let's do one more. One more. Yeah. One more. One more. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, we almost cracked the glasses. Okay, let's stop that game. You, it doesn't look like it's helping you at all. Well, it feels good at first, but then it just goes away. And so it's not Okay, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Right there. I got Hold on. I got one. I got another one. I got another one. Hold up. Really? When I'm down, sometimes I like to get out my storybook and I like to read a story. Okay. And then the wolf came to the house and said, little pig, open this door. And he said, no, I'm not going to open the door. And then the wolf was like, I'm going to blow it down. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. Okay, that doesn't seem to be doing it either. No, it just kind of freaks you out. Okay. People at the door, you don't want to let them in. And like, oh, my gosh, the house is going to come down on me. Probably not the best story. Okay, I got one Last thing that I need to get. Okay. I'm going to sing you a song, Chuck. And that song's real special. It's called Good, Good Father by Rodney Johnson. 
<clears throat> You're a good, good father. To you are, to you are, and um, uh, you're supposed to be making me feel better. No, just, that no, didn't work. No, no, no. Okay, no. well, you know, Chuck, I'm coming to the bottom of barrels of ideas for fun for you, so you're making this tough. You know, uh, you know what? I tell you what. Sometimes when I, when I'm just down in the dumps and I don't know what to do, uh, like right now, I don't know what to tell you, man. Maybe all we should do is pray. What do you think about that? Can we just pray together? Well, can I, I pray tried for you. Well, let me let me pray for you, Chuck, and and then I'll leave you alone, and you okay. can kind of work through this. But but let's let's pray, Lord. Okay. I just thank you for my my dear friend Chuck. Uh, Lord, I know he's down in the dumps, and I know that's no fun, and that sometimes that just really stinks, and we don't know how to get out of it. So I I thank you, Lord, that your scriptures tell us that you're with us. It, it tells us that you're not far, but you are near us, and you're with us in the midst of these moments. And so, Father, I pray you you just uh, work on Chuck's heart, that you would open it up, and that uh, you would just uh, remind him that you love him, that you care for him, and that you're here with him. I pray these things in your name. Amen. Okay. Well, thanks, Micah. Yeah. Again, I... That's all I, I know to do it. sometimes. I so. appreciate it. All yeah. right, man. Well, hey, I'll be back in the all morning. Right, I'll see you, see you, okay? See you, man. The next day. Hey, Micah, Ooh. how are you? Whoa. Whoa, Chuck, this ain't the same guy I saw yesterday. No, What's going man, on? man, I feel great, man. You feel good? Yeah, I do. What happened? You know what? I felt so down. I felt so alone, Mm. and and I just I kept feeling sorry for myself because all the stuff I couldn't do and how empty I felt Mm -hmm. and how frustrated I was and how things weren't going my way. But you know what? I kept trying to fill that feeling with something that was temporary, that wouldn't last. But when you reminded me that when I'm down, I can pray Mm. and have that relationship with God, it's like the clouds rolled back and heaven spoke. And my heart was full of joy. Awesome. It was great, man. Well, that's cool, man. Well, hey, maybe when this is all done, we can go play outside. I agree. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> all right. Round of applause for our New Life Pastors. Aren't they awesome? Oh, my goodness. They are a hard act to follow for sure. So... Today we are talking about how God is with us. And guys, don't beat yourself up if you've asked that question. Well, is God really there? I can't see him. Everybody asks that question at some point. So let's look to God's word for some answers. Ready? All right. Now there are so many places in the Bible that talks about this, but I just chose a couple of my favorites to share with you tonight. So Psalm 139, 7 through 10 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn or settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. Oh, that's a great promise, isn't it? And then right at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 28, 20, before Jesus ascends into heaven, he says, Surely I am with you always, always to the very end of the age. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6 says, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. All right, let's go to the next slide here. So what does that mean for us then? Those are some great promises. Well, number one, that means that we don't need to be afraid. God will always provide for us, guide us, help us, and protect us. We need to trust him. Number two, he will never leave us. As a matter of fact, his whole redemptive plan in the Bible is to bring us back to him. In 1 Peter 3.18, it says that the whole reason that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead was to bring us back to God. And then it also says... um, When Jesus returns with a loud command and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God um, to bring believers up into the air so that we can be with the Lord forever. 
And then, of course, with the new heavens and the new earth, um, the reason that they're going to be so wonderful is because the great giver of life himself who created us is going to be with us. Revelation 21, 3 through 4 says this. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Oh, what a great promise guys, that being with God is God's whole plan for redemption. Sin has separated us from God, but God sent Jesus to pay for our sins that we might be with him. So the most powerful being in the universe who literally created you and everything you see loves you and is in control. We can trust him. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide here. Um, being led by his unseen hand. Um, my kids have asked me, and this is how I've responded. They've said, you know, how can we know that God is real, that he's there? And I've been a Christian for like 30 years now. And one thing I can tell them is, you know, the longer I have lived, the more times I have prayed and I have seen his unseen hand orchestrate events and protect me and guide me and help me so many times that I feel like I have evidence in my heart and soul that he is real and that his word is true and what he says will happen. So the more you practice being a Christian and living for God and praying to him and see him answer prayers, the more evidence you will have for the existence of his unseen hand, loving you and helping you and protecting you. But you have to pay attention. The eyes of your heart cannot be hardened and you can't be distracted with everything else. You need to be looking for his unseen hand uh, helping you and need to know what his word says. If the eyes of your heart are closed, you're not going to notice when he does do things. So you have to pay attention. So here's what we're going to do this week. Uh, our activity is going to be making a prayer journal. Go back for just one second to the prayer journal um, or the other one there. There we go. So I'll show you what I'm thinking your guys will look like. You'll have just a regular sheet of paper with three columns. And I want to challenge you guys to pray for five things this week, okay? This won't take more than like five minutes a day. So I want you guys to almost like test God um, and see him prove himself to be real and true to his word. So the first column says what I prayed for. So you can think of a few things to pray for. The second column says how God answered. And the third column says when God answered. So you can put a little date there or you can put a check mark there. Um, now, I want you guys to know that God is not a genie in a bottle. Um, he will answer his prayers either with a yes, a no, or a not right now. Um, but my hope is that as you take the time and put the effort into recording some of the things you're praying for, uh, he will show you um, that he is real and that he is powerful and able and near to us to hear our prayers and answer our prayers. So um, I was going to draw that on the board here, but I think you guys maybe get the answer, just or get the idea. Three columns, um, and then across the top, what I prayed for, how God answered, and when God answered, and then just the five prayer requests. So there's your challenge for this week. Pray for five things and see that God is real, okay? Now, um, I also wanted you guys to know that ab about prayer, I have been praying and your leaders have been praying and our pastors have been praying all year. And I just really want you guys to know that I want every child and every adult listening to know that you guys can call on the name of the Lord right now and be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord 
will be saved. If you have not yet made that decision to trust in Jesus and his death and resurrection, then you can trust in him as your Lord and Savior right now, and you can be ushered into the family of God. Oh, how great the love of the Father has lavished on us that we can be called children of God. If you make that decision tonight to call on him as your Lord and Savior and to trust in him, let your parents know and let us know, because there is no greater joy than seeing one sinner turn from sin and turn to God. So let us know that, okay? Now, um, we want to see what you guys did. So I want to see your prayer journals. Get creative with these and take pictures of them. Hashtag this is New Life Aberdeen. And you can either put it on our Facebook page or you can email it to me, children at newlifeaberdeen.org. I want to see what you guys did and what you prayed for. And you know what? If you have a great testimony about how God answered one of your prayers, share that with us. That's a great way to encourage others is for them to hear how God has answered your prayers. So we're going to go ahead and fold our hands now, and we're going to end in prayer. Now to him who is able to save you completely and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all ages, now and forevermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Oh, Father, um, help us to be faithful in prayer. You have promised to always hear our prayer and answer our prayer. Help us to believe, God, deep in our heart and soul that you are real, and that you care about us, and that you will be faithful to love us and guide us and protect us and provide for us. You have said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Oh, help that truth just to take root in our hearts, Jesus. And now we celebrate this year, another year of teaching your word in the books for Gospel Project, and you have done great things. And I just praise you for letting us teach your word. And I praise you for each of the volunteers who gave so faithfully of their time. Uh, Lord, just make their joy complete in your presence. So I thank you and bless your name. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. Okay, are you ready? I'll meet you at Dairy Queen in a couple minutes, okay? Don't forget, I'm a new life kid. That's the code. And volunteers can just identify themselves as volunteers. So let's go get some ice cream. See you there. <laughs>